So the uh, one of the things that we wanted to do since we introduced the warp stabilizer back in 5.5 five, mm-hmm. was that after effects artists wanted to bend, break, and do stuff with it, okay. right? Uh, rather than just stabilize the scene. Yeah. When we put warp stabilizer into Premiere, okay. you know, that's where it makes more logical sense yes. to just purely stabilize stuff. So that let us go back to after effects and say, okay, you want to screw it up? How do we do it? You know, how do we do some interesting things from a creative side? And that's why we now call it inside of After Effects the Warp Stabilizer BFX. Got it. Right? As an example, I'm gonna I got some shaky footage here. I've got a coconut on a beach. But I don't want to stabilize the whole scene. I just want to stabilize the coconut. Right? So you're familiar with the camera tracker yep. that we did? So now in the warp stabilizer, I can basically do track points just like I could in the camera tracker. So as an example, I can go through and I can say, you know what, I don't want stabilization, and I've already done it for the rest of the, the shot there, but I can just get rid of any track points as they kind of come creep up here and there. Oh, I don't want stabilization there. Let me get rid of that guy. The whole point being is, is that now I've got basically, when I get rid of those track points, I should have a stabilization routine focused on the coconut, but the rest of the scene should behave like a camera. Right, so as an example, I go in and I'm rendering that, and you can kind of see it jigging around in the background there, but the reality is, is that the coconut, really for the still. most part, yeah. is staying nice and still. There's a yeah. little bit of movement, you know, as the overall camera moves, but for the most part, that was the creative element that can I Can you play one more time without the studio stabilizer? So obviously there's some scaling yep. that goes in, but just to give you an idea. Oh my God, that's huge. Yeah. That's so great. It's, a, it's a big deal. That's awesome. The other thing, speaking of scaling, preserve scale is a new feature. So if you have a lot of zoom, mm-hmm. the auto scaling can wreck your zoom. Mm-hmm. So this is allow you to focus the stabilization on a single point and then keep your zoom intact by not having to scale the rest of the scene. Uh, the other thing you can do is do reverse stabilization. So I, my camera shape was intentional. I want that, but I also now want to apply effects mm-hmm. that behave to the camera. Okay. So this was the ability to focus on the reverse stabilization capabilities, that's and awesome. that's the reason why we're calling it warp stabilizer VFX. VFX, yeah. I get it. I love it. Awesome. The next thing I'm going to show you is um, uh, along the lines of the sneak that that came out yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, I've got some footage here that, for the most part. Say I wanted to get rid of the mountain range, I'm going to rotoscope that out. I got a tree line there that's moving in the wind, forget it. I mean, it, this is just either going to take such a stupid amount of time, I'm going to discard the footage, or if I do it, it's going to be an eye balloon task. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, you know what, the rotobrus in CS5, which is really good for like um, garbage mats and mm-hmm. wire removal and that kind of stuff, what, can I use that from this perspective to kind of just go through... I get my talent here in the tree line, and I want the truck and the canoes, everything here. I just want to cut out the mountain. Right? Uh-huh. There we go. And then I'll tell it not to do the mountain range because I don't want that in there. I can keep in mind this is single click, basically, or a couple of clicks. So it could be better, but you know the problem with the rotor brushes is that it's a very hard edge. Yep. You know, and that's not going to work. This is where I would have to go in and mask out every leaf. You know, from a zoom it in and do it from there. But now the Refine Edge tool, similar to what's in Photoshop, but it's temporally coherent over time. Mm -hmm. So what it can do is I would go in and I will paint my edge and say, okay, I want you to use some optical flow technology, and I want you to focus on this edge. I'm going to get my talents here, the head, and I'm going to go across here. And now you get the idea that basically we're, we're doing a fine detail out of a complex background. And just to give you an idea, of, that's essentially how we've now rotoed everything oh, wow. on a you know, very detailed basis. And just to really kind of give you an idea, you know, in two clicks, I wanted to create this into a savanna. I've got a not bad roto. My talent's a little weak there. I can go back and fix wow. that. But, you know, in a couple of clicks, I can go in and say, all right, well, let me throw this guy in there and see what it looks like. Now, this was in conjunction with the Rotobrush? This was in conjunction with the Rotobrush, but there's also an effect called Refine Soft Matte, okay. which is the same thing. Um, this thing? Mm-hmm. Use that with key light. Oh. When you're keying, or yeah. doing something like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. like as an example, uh, you know, this is something that I've already worked on. This is the same technology being applied to a key and really bringing out a nice clean key from that side, which you would not normally get, like as an example, if I look at the effect and I turn off uh, Refine Soft Matte, you can see oh, how hard yeah, the edge yeah, yeah, yeah. is um, and go from there. Oh, so this nice. is the same thing. It works nice with rotoscoping and keying, um, and you get a much nicer key. Uh, That's really nice. Sense? Yeah, I love it. So the big one, the big kahuna. 
Uh, okay, Paul was the big guy. No. <laughs> okay, no. So one of the things we wanted to do, again, uh, you teach a class yes. in Cinema 4D and Apple yes. Effects. So one of the things we wanted to look at was, okay, we see a lot of people doing stuff between Cinema 4D and AE. Image sequences, multiple pass renders, 3D object data, all that coming into AE, do your composite. Oh, you got to make a change. Go back to cinema, re-render, bring it back in. And I mentioned during the lunch, we started with dynamic link. Can we do something like that? The cool thing is, is that the first step was bringing a .c4d file into After Effects. Natively. Natively. Wow. So that's, there's no image sequence here, that's a single file. Wow. And if I'm just to render it here, this is the final full render of this file on top of, you know, inside of AE, and it's the real deal. Uh, Maxon created the, what's called the Cineware plugin. That's how you control the render. So I could say, hey, I want to do, you know, just a pure software render, I want no PE calculation or textures. I can turn that off because I want more performance while I'm animating. Mm -hmm. um, and I can do also, I can extract all the meaningful 3D data. You know what, I might even want to basically turn oh this God. down. Third, I'll say, okay, I want to uh, make it use an After Effects camera instead of the C4D camera. All right, well, I'll do that. And then I'll use, say, the camera tool and flip it around. You know, because it is real 3D geometry, this isn't postcards in space. You can do all those types of things. So the nice thing is, is that you've got a lot of command and control, you've got a lot of opportunities, you've got a whole multi-pass workflow. So you could say, hey, I want, I'm gonna turn this back up, and I'm gonna turn this into, uh, I'll say multi-pass, and then I'll say, make that the shadow layer. All right, the cool thing is, is that it'll calculate the shadow layer. I could just duplicate my layers and set each one with the right blend mode. Oh my God. And it's super, super simple. Wow. But the nice thing is, is that just as I revert this, and essentially, the dynamic link capability is, again, that iterative render. We wanted to make sure that every artist had the ability to use Cinema 4D, could introduce to Cinema 4D, so we put Cinema 4D inside of After Effects. So you can go to Added Original, and uh, just let me make sure I've got this not running. I do. It steals my thunder if I don't do that. Cinema 4D Lite. So as an example, watch, watch, watch. You do an Edit Original and uh, it comes up, comes up so fast. <laughs> Cinema 4D Lite is included with the install of After Effects. So now if I wanted to say wow. change the texture, I'm going to change the texture of the arrow, yep. just in this case, something simple. Oops. That's okay, that would have worked too. Yeah. <laughs> just Doesn't look safe. as good, but it works. So this is, the, this is the difference between dynamic link and this. That's why we call it a live 3D pipeline. Hit save, jump over to AE, and the arrow Updates. is down. Blue. So that, that's the dynamic link type of ability. To show what Cinema 4D Lite can do, because it is a fully featured 3D package, uh, the Maxon dudes are much better than that. And of course, if I'm in Premiere with uh, After Effects Comp, you know, dynamic link the all same the way thing's through. beautiful, yeah. So here's some of that Danny Way footage we got yep. from Waiting for Lightning. I'm gonna jump because we lose time really quickly, but anyway, you got them cruising down the, down the ramp. Do a little tableau. And he lands safely on the other side. So we took that footage, add a little 3D to it, add a little scaffolding over him. So a nice set extension. Nice set extension piece. Got him bopping down. Going to your tableau, and then he has that skateboard he's been showing. He's got a nice little 3D effect. <laughs> So the nice thing is too is is it you know if you're working with some FBX, OBJ, Alembic, anything like that, Cinema that 4D supports in. all that stuff, yeah. right? So you can bring all those things via the light version of so Cinema 4D right into it. Got the scene in After Effects, and I go into my uh, my shot. Yep. And I've already got the tracking done, so you can go ahead and select these. And this you can use the new tool that's in the After Effects to set the ground plane yep. origin, which is helpful inside of Cinema. Grab a couple of points and make those solid so that I can save those over to Cinema 4D. Go export, and I can. Export to Cinema 4D oh, file, wow. directly to C4D. Comes in looking like this. Yep. There's my two tracker points. Got my ground plane set to the ground plane that I created. If I want to, I can go ahead and drop a background on there and drop the footage in there. Now I can see, see my track planes work really well. Because this is a very robust version of Cinema 4D, you can't do polygonal modeling, but you can do primitives or nerves modeling. I can make things like make that scaffolding so you can model that. And then I can take that into my lightning scene, mm -hmm. drag it onto my track solid, and center it out in my icon, or my space, mm -hmm. turn it the right direction, 
we just go place it. Here, place it right over here, hit save, and go back to After Effects, and now I can import my Cinema 4D scene file directly in After Effects. Mm -hmm. Right there, just drag Cinema 4D into the comp, and boom, I've got a... That's crazy. Scene. Go ahead and turn on my, my uh, matte layer. And now I've kind of matted it in there pretty easily. Anything you do, now if I go back and go, well, you know, I wanted to make that a little different, I can go back in here, do something silly, save it, go back to After Effects, boom. Anything you do in cinema is automatically updated on the other side. So. The rendering engine inside of After Effects supports the full studio, so projects you create with all of this stuff. You have to bake, mm -hmm. so keep in mind how you're doing character certain animation things, yeah. and certain things. Okay. So um, if you're, so if you have Studio installed, it's going to fire up Studio. Okay. If you don't, it's going to oh, fire up. Okay. Fire. So oh, okay. Okay. It'll automatically know whether you've got it installed or not and give you the full boat. Oh. But like he said, right down here, you've got. You can now each of these each of these layers down here, these Cinema 4D, can then be defined as an image layer. Any of your um, any of your layers that you've set up in your rendering, mm -hmm. multi-pass layers, or you can apply it to um, layers if you want to. So you could have create layers inside of Cinema 4D, and you can utilize those as separate layers inside of After Effects. So it's sort of like layer rendering. So my Cinema 4D scene does not have to be rendered out anymore. No. It just goes in it's there. It's in there. You render for one time. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, that is awesome. So, wow. and the nice thing is, is it with everybody having oh access? So, the folks who are just coming in new to 3D, mm -hmm. they have access to a fully featured 3D application just by installing After Effects. And then, you know, Maxon's got a very good path for them mm -hmm. as they as they go to the next level to their prime product, their broadcast product, the studio product. Um, you know, I think some of the features that you get with Light uh, by registering and so forth, I think you get some stuff that's not even in Prime. You get, you know, some of the MoGraph yeah, modules. Yeah, so you get, you get the fracture and object mm -hmm. and the plane and the random effector. So if you register, you get those two extras. So it's even a little bit more than Prime. It's but good. Prime, it's, it was built on Prime. Take out the polygon, okay. uh, polygon modeling. Take out some of the deformers. You get some deformers. You get some generators. You get all the nerves. You get all the splines. And uh, let's see what else. Uh, no particles, no character tools. Right. Okay. Other than that, it's a very robust uh, product. I mean, you can do a lot with just you can what do a ton. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what you see, the only thing that wasn't done in this piece uh, in this piece, was modeling the skateboard. We modeled the skateboard separately, but the, the, the explosion is fracture object. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the, the, the scaffolding is all built in Prime. All this was done in Prime. That's using an Illustrator file. And the TVs are an Alembic file that we brought in. Yeah. So, I mean, in the skateboard, actually, I think it's in your library. Yes. You know, just it will be available on this. If you fill out the registration thing I give, I'll send you a link to tutorials to build this project okay. from beginning to end. It's about six to eight hours of tutorials. Okay. Great. Wow. Thoughts? Good, bad, uh, ugly? Game changing. Uh, revolutionary. What else do I want me to say? I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> buzzwords. I mean, because I've been. These are buzzwords. <laughs> I've uh, been working with Paul forever. I've, it's the first 3D tool I ever learned, mm -hmm. and it's my favorite. And uh, to have it be able to work in this like that, that's ridiculous. That's amazing. Cool. I think the kids are going to freak out um, that they can do this because it's a little bit of a more workflow right now to render everything out, bring it into, you know. Yep. But to do that? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I mean, because the tracker's there. I mean, oh, my God. Cool. I'm impressed, fellas. I'm a huge fan. And I will uh, prophesize this. Cool. Well done.